Welcome back to your live continuing coverage of CES 2016 on Be Terrific. We are a proud media partner of CES. You are the Terrifics, you make Be Terrific special. I'm Michael Artsis, thanks so much for joining us. We're coming to you live from the Sands Exposition Center in Las Vegas, Nevada. This is the second location of CES 2016. This has several halls this year, which is unbelievable. And then of course, you know, we go over to the Venetian and Palazzo Suites where there's a lot of other vendors showing off their wares in a different kind of environment, perfect for home audio and all sorts of great stuff as well. And of course, there's the Aria. This CES show just keeps growing and growing and growing. Here at the Sands, you have a lot of young companies, a lot of innovation, Eureka Park, that's where all the startups are, and a lot of fun. We've been having a lot of fun walking around even in the breaks. I'm wearing the brand new Aftershocks Trex. These came out uh, today, or like a day ago, I guess the beginning of CES. They're unbelievable. You know I'm a big fan of Aftershocks. We found them here last year and they're still a young company, but these are bone conducting headphones and the great part about these new ones is that they bend so you don't have to worry about breaking them because they're titanium, which also makes them a little bit more comfortable. We're going to have Bruce on tomorrow to tell us all about these, but I am so excited about them. I think they look cool, they're stylish, mm -hmm. many different colors. Just one example, Tyler, mm -hmm. of some of the great innovative products here. Sometimes mm -hmm. we build on an existing product mm -hmm. that was super innovative and sometimes it's completely new and sometimes it's both. Uh, mm -hmm. Tyler, you're from the CTA, the yeah. organization that puts on CES, mm -hmm. and that is the Consumer Tech Technology Association, mm -hmm. formerly the CEA. And you got your messaging points down, Michael, I appreciate it. You're very welcome. You're saving me. <laughs> I think it's very interesting and smart and right, the right time to make mm -hmm. that change. Well, thanks for saying so, and we made the change back in November, and it just made sense, frankly. There wasn't much debate about it. You look at the depth and breadth of companies we represent. We're more than 2,200 companies in the tech sector. And yeah, we have the traditional manufacturers like Sony and Samsung and LG and uh, Nikon and Fuji and Canon and you name a sector, we've got the traditionals, right? But now we're breaking into these disruptive sectors where we have sharing economy companies like Uber and Lyft and Airbnb. We've got content and delivery companies, Netflix, Stars. Right, we're all over the place with these companies that are not making traditional consumer electronics products, and consumer tech just encompasses the, the growing sector so much better. So I appreciate you getting the naming down. Well, you're, you're very welcome, and it's very important to us because um, we see it as a technology show, not right. so much an electronics show anymore. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of low tech stuff that really helps that is still tech all the way up to very high tech stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, we had somebody on earlier called Hudway. It's a very simple little thing. You put your phone on it, mm -hmm. they uh, have a little uh, piece of uh, polycarbonate on an articulating, I guess, arm mm -hmm. that is above your phone. You mount that to your dashboard and now when your phone gives you navigation directions, you have a heads up display so you're not looking down at your phone to get the turn. Yeah, yeah. And Brilliant. you know, it has all sorts of other features like mm -hmm. that. One example of low tech being very good. Another one, uh, a company called Refuel, has mm -hmm. uh, batteries for GoPros. Your biggest problem with the GoPro is the battery lasts about 20 minutes, especially in cold weather. Mm -hmm. You can take a back, uh, like a GoPro style back with a battery in it from this company, slap mm -hmm. it on, clip it down, it looks like a GoPro, a little bit thicker, mm -hmm. and now you have 24 hours of continuous power for your GoPro. Isn't it so cool when you see that ecosystem build out? You see a, a product that hits, yeah. and GoPro is a great example. They're a member of ours. They're one of those disruptors that we talk about. So they get into a niche market, right? And, and that was uh, you know, Nick's vision, I think, all along. Once he figured out, he, took, he could take it off of a board and put that camera anywhere. Um, but then, then that whole development of the ecosystem of infrastructure and accessories that support that, that core product, whether it's in uh, you know, digital imaging like GoPro, or you're talking about any kind of smartphone accessory or audio, visual, it just it grows um, you know, exponentially. Yep. Right, in that reverse pyramid kind of way. Well, and then there's a lot of really high tech that's, it's so amazing we can fit it into such small spaces. Like mm -hmm. There have been a lot of 360 cameras. Uh, right. We had Ollie Cam on earlier and, and several others, but we've got one hanging on our set at the Las Vegas Convention Center. Mm -hmm. People can go to the iTunes store and download the Ollie Home App, A-L-L-I-E Home App, it's mm -hmm. free, and they can go look at the Be Terrific feed and they can put on uh, a headset and check out our set in 360 live in real time. Brilliant. Or they can just hold their phone up and move it around, yeah. and it's also available for Android. Uh, there are a lot of companies 
companies like that making great 360 products, mm -hmm. so much tech packed into that. How about Mercedes-Benz with the car oh gosh, that actually transforms as you're driving it to be more aerodynamic? Yeah. And here, there is so much that blows my mind. Companies mm -hmm. like Fitbit extending what they've been doing to make themselves better and more revolutionary. But mm -hmm. how about Pico Brew? That's such a, a great idea. Mm -hmm. They come out with basically the Kerrig of home brewing. You know, mm -hmm. Adam has been brewing beer at home forever, and it takes him <laughs> months to get one little thing, and then maybe it's not even that good. Yeah, yeah. You can get a, a recipe from anywhere in the world from a, a little brewery that you like, mm -hmm. put it in a cartridge into a machine mm -hmm. like your Kerrig coffee maker, and two hours later have a beer that is from Austria. Yeah, we had uh, Pico on at uh, CES New York. So yes, we were there, we were show. live, and is we had them on. So is that where That's the first where we time first saw them. Yeah, they haven't been on here yet. Yeah, yeah and, and so we're, this is a, a bit of an early display, right, pre-CES, where we have a number of uh, exhibitors come and, and invited press come in, so a much, much smaller version, but New York, obviously, with you all there, too, it's a key market. Yeah. So Pico sets up, and it's, it's interesting, as you see enough of these unveiled events, how the flow and the buzz uh, uh, grows so organically, right? And part of it is, okay, where does the crowd enter? How do they make their way around the room? And the same thing happens behind us on a much grander scale. So everybody makes a loop, and you see more of the crowd, in this case, draw to the Pico booth, because these guys are handing out samples. Yeah. And it's really, really good beer. It was amazing, and, it and, was amazing. And so I'm not the biggest beer guy in the world, and I yeah. told them that straight out. I said, mm -hmm. just letting you know, Adam was actually producing, so he had run away, and I said, listen, <laughs> I, I'm letting you know, he's the beer connoisseur, I'm not, uh -huh. and I, I don't like beer. I, I actually mm -hmm. don't. And and I tasted it, and it was very, I liked it. I mm -hmm. really liked it. I was like, wow, and they just said, you haven't had the right beer. And I, I said, okay. I don't really like beer. We're going to check the man card yeah. during the next No, 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 I'm, say, I'm being, I'm done. I'm, look, totally I'm an fair. honest guy. Totally fair. I, I was at the last, the, the last beer I had, the last game at Shea Stadium, I went with my friend, uh -huh. and he said, you got to have a beer with me here. We grew up being Mets fans. Yeah. And uh, I said, okay. I took a couple sips, I was trying to get through it, and the woman next to me, you know, put it on the ground, she knocks it over, and she's mm -hmm. like, oh my God, I'm so sorry, I'll buy you another one. I'm like, don't worry about it, it's all good. <laughs> it's a bit of a microcosm of being a Mets fan to begin with. I'm I, trying <laughs> to enjoy it, but I'm really, really hating it, you know? <laughs> what, what's cool for me, Mike? Are you a it? Nationals fan being in you D.C.? Know, a little bit, they're pretty young too. Are you an Orioles like, fan? No, I mean, I grew up watching the Orioles. I grew yeah. up in D.C., which is kind of weird, wow. right? And stayed in D.C., and they were the only team we had. And the Nats are young, they're a little over 10 seasons old. It's fun to watch them, they're yeah. a great team, it's a great experience. So next time you're in DC, our tickets, okay? Oh, that Come would be amazing, out. I would love that, um, thank one you. One of the things you're alluding to though is why I love being in the tech sector and with CTA is that tech is branching out into all these non-traditional verticals, right? You mentioned home brewing. They're in the coffee sector now, a, a little bit of the same vein. Um, we see tech getting into the sports arena, the health and fitness marketplace is right behind your set here. Sure. Um, so Under Armour, Fitbit, some of the traditional sporting goods companies like Spalding and Easton. Easton, oh my God. So here's a story for you. As, as a okay, I got, fan, one, you I got, I got one right after you. What's okay. yours? It's a, it's a smaller story. It's just that all week, I didn't know they were here doing that. Mm -hmm. And all week I was like, telling people they come on and they were talking about how, oh, and I go, you know it'd be great if you could make it so I could track my bat speed and I could find out if, Boom. And right? then yesterday, Andrea interviews them, uh -huh. and I'm like, wait a second, are, wait, you, Easton is doing this? Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Because that's what, I, you, you need quick hands in baseball. So yeah. it's great that like we're thinking of it saying, thinking we're thinking ahead, and here mm -hmm. it is today. And I didn't mean to interrupt no, your story. No, 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 the next step beyond that though, Michael, is like the centralization of everything, yeah. right? So you can now gauge your bat speed and the, you know, your plane, whether you're hitting the plane, whether sure. you're at the, how, how much you're maximizing the proper playing time. Right, you want you want to hit in a baseball bat, you don't want to undercut the ball no, or, go or hit top. down that's on that's it. That's how Mike Schmidt always always hit, right? Well, yeah, if you want to hit ground balls, base hits, you're going to yeah. hit you know here, but you really want to hit the sweet spot right on the middle of the ball, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so yeah. But what they were saying is, so now you can track your bat speed and right. where your bat's going. So they sensorize your jersey, right, and you can take batting practice or even in a game, you can tell maybe your back shoulder's dipping or you're pulling out a little bit on inside pitches. Isn't that amazing? So what takes you know, this access to top level coaching to determine, right, and real one-on-one -on -one contact, say, yeah, Michael, quit dropping your back shoulder. That's why you're stepping in the bucket and you're popping up so much. You can get the read on your phone and, and see it for yourself and analyze it. So our story was we were giving, uh, uh, we do a number of tours, I mean, countless tours to various groups and certain celebs who come through. So two days ago, we get hooked up with Alex Rodriguez. A-Rod. Yeah. Wow, and he's so here? He was. This he was, was yeah. on, what's today, Friday? This was Wednesday. <laughs> I don't know what day. I'm losing track, <laughs> man, I'm there with you. Um, 
So we're taking him to the sports and health and fitness sure. sector, which is what he wants to see. And we wind up at the Easton exhibit. So they've got a batting cage there, and you're hitting off it to your wood bat. Oh, don't even tell me. And that's where they're demonstrating me. everything. A-Rod gets to the plate? He does not, which okay. is smart, right? Yeah, he, he, it can't, he can't do that. Nothing to prove. But he's there, and the guys who are demoing it yes. again and again for tech professionals and people in the sector now have, you know, you're going to get a bunch of emails about this, but probably one of the greatest living hitters. Yeah. No, certainly one of the greatest active hitters career-wise. Without a doubt. In their cage, yeah. listening to them talk about their product. Sure, that's amazing. The that only, is only amazing. thing that was more surreal is as we were walking on the floor, walking off and on in uh, one of the access elevators sure. with the gates closing, it's Cal Ripken. Whoa. So A-Rod and Cal are like, hey, hey. That must they, have been amazing for you. I, I was frozen. I mean, yeah. I, couldn't, I couldn't pull out the phone fast <laughs> enough. I just, I froze. But it's a serendipitous moment that still happened, yeah. even with more than 3,600 exhibitors, even with 150 to 175,000 people, there's room for that serendipity where connections are still made almost randomly. I, I am so excited to be a media partner. Thank you so much, we love the CTA. We're glad you're uh, here. You guys have been doing so many cool things though, and it, I think that it, tech gets into so much other stuff that mm -hmm. now, like, the, the NBA broadcast live from here. Wasn't that cool? That was unbelievable. Were you watching last night? I was. They had a clip of uh, Kenny Smith's wife on The Price is Right. And they were the. Uh, I wasn't Talk about a show that needs some technology. Uh, it wasn't the show. <laughs> Isn't that part of the charm? No, it's like. It's it like is, though, show. it is. So they had some kind of. Uh, it wasn't a showcase show now, but it was some price yeah. challenge. And it was a papa shot with, with okay. two different baskets on it. And they picked Kenny Smith's wife <laughs> to demonstrate it. She's, she's missing every one. And they go back and. And and Shaq and Charles just oh, Boston. I could imagine. Really, and they they were right right out wow. here. It was cool. It's, it's awesome. Yeah. I, I I love that. I, and the ninety four fifty basketball that was here last year was a great example of yeah. how this tech started to evolve into you know what Easton is doing now mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. uh, really giving you great feedback of of all that stuff. And we say that also with um, in the soccer sector. Yeah. My daughter's a soccer player, so sure. that's why I pay attention to this. But with the Adidas Smart Ball, Adidas another yeah. great member of, of CTA. And again, it's that branching out of tech into sure. everything. Thing. And it's the same thing, it's got, uh, it's a sensorized ball, so you can tell your speed, your trajectory, the angle you're getting, so you don't have to have this top level coaching to say what you're doing well or what you're doing wrong. You get the metrics right there to figure it out for yourself. It's amazing, it's okay. amazing. And you know, there's, there's something with coaching where sometimes you don't tell the person the right way, mm -hmm. now they can see it in their phone and they get it. And, and you know, it's not only about coaching, it's about seeing it for yourself with your mm -hmm. own eyes. You right. can see your footage, you can see how it's telling you and where you dipped your shoulder, as you mentioned mm -hmm. before. Um, I also love companies like Life Fuels is here. They're a young company, mm -hmm. th and they, I just talked to them. They're going to come on tomorrow, and they were saying, we met them at a CES Unveiled, oh, cool. and they were saying yeah. how, um, you know, look, we weren't sure if we could really make this. It's a big mm -hmm. investment for us. They said it's been the best money ever spent for them. Th they've had such so great cool. meetings, so much business out of it. Their yeah. booth has been filled. I walked over to their booth. It's it's jammed. You can't even get by there. <laughs> but it's such a great product. It mm -hmm. is putting together technology, um, vitamins, and eating right, yeah. and fitness together in one product. And the I love when they all bottle, work together. Right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Where and and then it, it distributes the right amount of vitamins at the right time mm -hmm. as you're drinking throughout the day. Right. No, it's so cool. And we are. If you know CES at all, we're at Tech West right now, yeah. and directly below Michael's feet are 500 plus startups in Eureka right. Park, right? Th and last year, Eureka Park was here on this floor, wasn't it? Uh, it's down below. It was it's always down, down below. below. Because we, we, we just, it's expanding I thought it was so like much. a small, no, but last year it was a smaller area just on this floor. It, you've expanded Actually, so much that it's down below. Last is that year right? it was in the Venetian. Oh, it was in the Venetian? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm it's losing hard, my mind. It's, <laughs> it's hard, hard to keep to track. There is so much. Me. We start prepping months and months I have this prediction I said yesterday, um, when uh, Kirsta was on, mm -hmm. that uh, we were talking and I said, when they build the Riviera Convention Center, you know, that's going to be an addition to the Las Vegas Convention Center, mm -hmm. instead of not being here at the Sands Expo and moving over there, mm -hmm. I think you're just going to add that as an addition. That's mm -hmm. how big this mm -hmm. is getting. I love North Hall is growing really into the cars and all this connected car technology. Yeah, yeah. And I just love how this keeps growing. It's just so fascinating and so fantastic. Well, thanks, Michael. We're so proud of that. And the auto sector is just a blast to see tech. How did you um, get into tech? How did I get into yeah. tech? Um, I spent a lot of time sitting where you are, actually. I was in uh, TV news, I was an international sure. correspondent for a number of years. Got into the energy uh, and sustainability uh, vertical for a little while. Enjoyed that, but was always thinking about what's next. And in energy, yeah, it's tr traditional fossil fuels, right? They're going to be around for, for a while longer. Yeah. But clean tech was so big. And clean tech isn't just about capturing solar rays or the most efficient way to convert tidal power into energy in kilowatt hours. 
it's uh, technology, yeah. right? And the more I delved into it, the more I enjoyed my work with the tech sector. Now, is the tech sector moving into energy rather than the energy sector moving into tech? I like it. And it, was, it was a place to be. When you were growing up, do you remember the first product that captured oh, your man, mind from a awesome technology question. standpoint? My first electronic product was, um, the old, I think it was Coleco football, <laughs> right? You know what, I just had a feeling it was going to be like something <laughs> like that. That is awesome. What was yours, do you remember? You know, I, I do remember. Um, the first one that really put me over the top mm -hmm. was actually Game Boy. Uh, I loved tech yeah, before yeah, that. Yeah. I remember I wired the first VCR in the house before you know any, uh -huh. anybody knew what to do with it. They're reading the instructions, boom, it's set yeah, up. Yeah. Um, but the thing that got me to love tech was the Game Boy, because I, I, it was the first product I couldn't imagine. And yep. then it was in my mm -hmm. hand, and it was like, this is the greatest thing ever. <laughs> and it's the same kind of thing that you're talking about, um, but this was, you know, like I liked Nintendo, and I had that before mm -hmm, that, and mm -hmm. there was the VCR and all this other stuff, but that was the one that really changed yeah. my mind and my life. And well, it's really yeah. iteration to iteration, right? So you, so you mentioned Game Boy, which yeah. is light years ahead of, uh, you know, blips on a screen, sure. making electronic sounds. <laughs> And then, then you go beyond. <laughs> you look you at remember it. Remember that? Yeah. Like. You go beyond that, and then you think of. Uh, you mentioned Nintendo, like Tecmo football. Oh, That's the first man. time you're like, I'm playing Bo Jackson. Right. And Bo Jackson's there on the screen. I yeah. see 34, and I see the Raiders colors. Yeah. And 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 now you look at. Um, I don't know if you caught the uh, Intel keynote the I, other night. I, I didn't catch that so one. So Brian Krasanich is is demonstrating one cool element of Intel helping one sector after another. Sure. Right. Whether it's personal training or. Um, uh, uh, sports television, sports broadcast. I can't, don't want to call it television anymore. It's broadcast, um, and and getting the metrics of the athletes doing what they're doing. But in this case, it was gaming, and their new 3D mapping technology. That you know, not only can you create your own player now, if you're going to play, let's say Madden, right, 2016, and you can name him Tyler Suiters and give yeah. him you know blonde hair, a mullet, or whatever. Now, with what they did this on stage was to map. Brian Krasanich, the CEO, is up there. They're mapping his head and face. Unbelievable. And they put him on, think of like a Halo-type character. Sure. Master Chief without the helmet. And his likeness is right there. Unbelievable. So you're watching yourself in and, the game. And the, um, the fact that you can immerse yourself with the VR in oh the game in a, such a different way, and it's only going to continue to evolve, it's unbelievable. And you can use that for sports training and for all yeah. sorts of other training, yeah. even like uh, flying and stuff. What's your favorite VR you've seen this year? Because VR, AR is, is one of the phenomenal growth areas. I'm, 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 I'm very low tech with it because of what we do. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I'm, I'm high tech with it, and I've done a lot, but my for favorite is, yeah, yeah. I love the idea that I, what I want to do is we do the New York Auto Show, the New York International right, Auto Show. Right. Instead of having us talk like this, you're, you're, let's say you're a guy from Porsche or Audi or Mercedes, mm -hmm. and you know people are looking at us, and maybe we can go shoot some B-roll of the car, and okay, right, whatever. Right. I'd like to put a, a, a 360 camera in the car, mm -hmm. in the actual car, maybe in the engine bay, and in the, I guess not in the trunk, but uh, so this is half-baked, okay? We haven't done it yet. <laughs> but, um, no, no, it's entrepreneurial, it's innovative. Thank you, and then, while I'm interviewing you here on set, they can either choose to watch this the way it is mm -hmm. or get our audio and actually be in the car. So when we start talking about the features Brilliant, in the right? car, yeah. they can go, oh my God, that's the door handle and this is the shift knob. And mm -hmm. again, it's such a low tech way to use VR, but in my mind, it's a great way to tell a story. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. my favorite concept. Um, I, we just saw this morning, Homido came on with their headset, but their headset comes oh, I haven't tried that, I've oh, seen that before. It's really tried. nice because yeah. it's a really well put together headset that works with any phone. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. also have these little foldable fold up ones that go in your pocket that you can, you know, then for like quick things do. Um, oh, cool. But the thing is cool is they have some apps and if you develop your video or your platform through their app, mm -hmm. you can add augmented reality to it. And as you were saying, AR, VR, and I haven't seen a lot of augmented reality that I really like, but uh -huh. theirs was awesome. Mm -hmm. You know, most of it's like, oh, you want to go to the Bosch booth? It's right there. So I'd be looking at you, yeah. and it'd be telling me Bosch exactly. right here. Exactly, Like, yeah. I don't know if that's really what I need. Yeah, So, yeah. yeah. Getting back to the old games for a second, I just have to ask okay. you this before I let you go. RBI Baseball, have you seen the 86 <laughs> Mets, like somebody did the whole, the whole 10th inning of game six? Of, Are you uh, yes, they did the. It's, it, you got to YouTube this. It's unbelievable. They've done the whole tenth inning where, and they got the players right because it's only the number. It's not the name right, you right, remember because right, right. they didn't right. have the licenses. Yeah. So like Gary Carter, Lee, you know, comes up with two outs uh -huh. and uh, you know bloops a single, and like the ball goes to the right spots. Everything, everything is correct. Oh, yeah. The wild pitch, the whole deal. Oh, it's man. unbelievable that somebody went back and did that. So here's my throwback, Michael. Uh, my throwback moment. 
my, my family and I were in Montreal this summer for the yeah. U.S. Women's World Cup, the soccer wow. team, right? God, we we're fortunate enough to go to the semifinals with the U.S. beat Germany, and our 12-year-old daughter, of course, freaked out. But we walk around Montreal day of, and it just so happens that their uh, kind of hands-on science and tech kids museum had this traveling exhibit. I think it's coming to D.C. sometime soon. I'm going to go back. Um, it, it's basically the evolution of the video game. So my wife and I take our daughter in, and we're able to, to, to play on the actual arcade games, Centipede, Asteroids, wow. Dig Dug, uh, Galaga. Oh, all right, I'm going to tell, tell you one, I'm gonna tell you one thing right. real quick. My in-laws have a home theater, a huge screen, uh -huh. okay? For the holidays, I bought my nephew who was going to be there, he's in college, mm -hmm. the Atari 2600 at uh, Bed Bath & Beyond. They're selling a retro thing. Are they really? Yeah. What's and the price point on that? It's, it's so cheap, $40. It comes with uh, 200 games with the controllers, the whole deal, right? I remember waiting in line to buy Pac-Man <laughs> on the Atari 2600. Oh, man. So, my brother-in-law is uh, uh, the Assistant Attorney General of Arizona, but and he's this Harvard-educated, you know, very buttoned-up guy, right? Uh -huh. And I, I, the kid opens it up, and I just thought he'd take it to his dorm room. He's like, can we play this? I'm like, sure. He was, we're going to plug it into the flat screen. I'm like, no, 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 let's bring it to the theater. The three of us, my brother-in-law, my uh -huh. nephew, and I are sitting in the home theater. I'm taking pictures of it, too, and we're playing Atari 2600 <laughs> on a huge screen. It was unreal. I haven't had that much fun in so long. It was so oh, great. And the kids, like, he was having fun. He's used to, you know, Halo, and he's having right. fun playing Atari. So you're right. It what is games a lot of fun. were you all ripping? Oh, my God. We did Asteroids. Yep. Um, we, did, uh, we, we did E.T. because we had to. Like, oh we're like, gosh. yeah. Um, what, what's, the, what's the one? Uh, 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 Yars Revenge. What was that one? Uh, what, that was the one, I don't even know how to explain it, but it was, hmm. the, if you watch the documentary on the E.T., yeah, yeah, up the, ET, yeah. the guy who made E.T. did Yars Revenge, and this was a huge That's success, cool. and you're like a weird character going through a world, but it was the first game that had um, flowers in it, where you could find, you know, you could find these little surprises yeah, yeah. that were purposely planted that you actually publicly knew they existed. Oh, that's yeah. so cool. Man, the, one that, really the one that was throwing me back so hard at this exhibit, Michael, was, um, uh, oh, we played remember mini the name golf of it. Too. It's, um, Intruder alert, intruder <laughs> alert. Oh gosh, uh, Berserker. Oh that's my one. God, that's so, so good. So cool, yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Oh my on. gosh, thanks for uh, having me on, Thank you for giving us your time. You are a lucky man. You get to check out all this tech before even we do. You know yeah. about it, and I'm, I'm a little jealous with that, but thank you for having us on, and thank you for having us here. We'd love to be part of it again next year. Oh, you guys and, are a great uh, partner, Michael. Thank you. And, hey, and thanks for not minding that I'm underdressed. You guys, you guys see this, this hand <laughs> stitching? Oh my gosh, and the cuffs. Of Thank course, you. not just one unbutton, but two unbutton. That's brilliant, man. I Thank think it's you Taylor's much. name after this. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Michael, Thank, Thank you, you so friend. much, Tyler. You got it. You guys stay tuned. We have a lot more coming on your live continuing coverage of CES 2016 on Be Terrific, an official media partner. We're very proud of that. At Be Terrific TV on all social media. Don't go anywhere. We got a lot more coming from both the Las Vegas Convention Center and the Sands here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Stay with us.